Welcome everybody to Red Light Disco Show's Fun Fridays. And this year, uh, the year of our Lord, 2023, we are here at the David Omen House off of Cielo Drive. Uh, down the road, maybe 150 feet that way, you have the Sharon Tate Murder House. Um, who, you know, it, it's a rental now that is being overrun months at a time by either Drake or LeBron James and they're just having parties and ragers there. But we're here to find out the true story of what is the David Omen House. And just already as we, we've been here already for a moment, we have found some very compelling uh, pieces of evidence that will, in my opinion, prove uh, of the paranormal activity that occurs here. So, well, welcome to the show. Give us a like, follow, subscribe, comment, be a friend, tell a friend. Let's go. in front of you. It's in front of you. It's not behind you. The background, it wasn't the fish tank. We're noticing it's not the back walls because it's in front of you. So unless there's a... No. AC here? AC no. would be there going it's this way. Off. It's not even going right. that way. You were here. Right. Okay. So I'm just trying to make sense. Watch yourself okay. before you make sense. Oh. Uh, make your neck. Do you feel there's something following you? in your everyday life since you've became the owner of this house? Since I built the house? No, I've never, I've never felt anything as far as threatening is concerned. I no. think we all have, I think personally we all have spirit guides that are around us, every one of us. So I'm not surprised that you guys pay, capture something on the thermal image. Do you think it's a spirit guide or do you think it's your friend? I, I believe at this moment you guys are friends. Oh, you're the, speaking of that spirits. one individual, the spirit. I, don't, I can't say specifically who it was or who it is that's here. Um, as I'm staring at the image of the portrait of Sharon, I'm thinking, well, of course it could have been Sharon. Um, I'll be honest with it, with you all. Since you guys have been here, the house feels... <laughs> Did you just hear that? It just feels like, since you guys have been here, it just feels like it's been turned up. Like the heat on a stove has been like turned from three to 10. It's very active. It's really prominent right now. And I was very impressed to say, good to know. Since to me, I'm accustomed to, as the old saying goes, when you live in a situation, you get accustomed to it. So I don't notice every day what's going on. What do you think it is about this place that gives off so much energy. Well, in, in, to answer your question, I like to, to defer to what Lisa Williams said when she was here um, 16 years ago, that the house is like a, um, it's just like a, a portal or a ghost flop house, for lack of better words. And as a result, when you walk in or you walk in or you walk in or you walk in, the spirits that are around you hit this environment, and it's um, at such an elevated DCMF levels that the spirits around you start to manifest. So it's not unheard of for me to hear people say, I just heard my grandmother whisper to me in my ear, and it's like, yeah, what about it? He goes, my grandmother's been dead for five years. I'm like, well, that's a trip. So what you're relating to me, have your experience in the bathroom, I, you did notice when I asked you, I said to you, I said, whispery voice. Mm -hmm. The characteristic of these voices, these disembodied voices, because they're not EVPs. They 
They're not electronic voice phenomena, which is through your little spirit box. This is a disembodied spirit just talking to you. I think it's somebody related to you that was talking to you at that moment in that bathroom, which, um, that bathroom is the room that's had a lot of occurrences of strange activity in there. From your point of view, you feel that we bring our own life here and it helps manifest things that are on the brink of manifestation, whether it be, you know, I just went, to, I just came from a family reunion. My, this is my grandma's first time missing. So it's really intense and heavy. You just said it. I, it That's and, who it was. And I, I, That's who it was that was connecting with you. I am I getting, I'm getting, I am getting tingles up and down, confirmation feelings up and tingles up and down my spinal cord right now, up and down my back when that's what it was. And I was going to say to you, somebody, because here's my point, everybody comes here with the expectations of what they've seen on the TV shows, proximity to the Sharon Tate house, and I get a bad rap about the house being, as it's like, David, you're exploiting the Sharon Tate murders. Uh, a, I'm not exploiting them because I'm not making any money off of this. B, this house is, is, is a small percentage of the activity is connected to the Sharon Tate murders that happens here. Your experience in that bathroom is connected to your grandmother who passed Sharon away. Tate. Nothing to do with Sharon Tate. Here's the rationale I express behind that. Why would somebody that you've never known that died 54 years ago, that you have no personal connection to, no connection to family-wise or any type of connection, come across the time and space continuum to say, to talk to you. <laughs> but your grandmother, who you were just at a family reunion where she's not gonna be at, who you miss, who knows that you're very much affected by her loss, is reaching out to make sure you're okay. What sounds more rational? I'm just asking, just, just from the plain perspective of forget TV shows, and I'm their biggest fan. Nobody takes it from the other side and says, what's in it for the spirit? What's in it for the ghost? Why is the ghost making this effort to go, I'm here? There doesn't make any sense. There's no connection. There's no connection-wise point of reference that you two have a connection. Your grandmother you do, that was my experience. Right. You got so from the outside looking in, we see this as oh, Sharon Tate. From TV shows, right? Yes, because that's the way it's spun. That's the way it is put in front of you. That's the way we consume it. What is the real story here for you? What is the story that, that truly you want told? Well, it's more of the house is more like a dynamic, active portal of paranormal activity. It's more than just a spot that Sharon Tate visits. Yes, people have been reported through the years that they've seen Sharon Tate and heard her voice. <coughs> Excuse me. But the point is, is that's just a piece of the puzzle. There's a lot more to the pie than just that. And that's really what it is. It's a unique experience. I mean, every time Stefan's been here, the equipment he's brought and utilized here, it's been crazy. The stuff that's happened here is nuts. So it's just one of those, you know, unique spots. And I enjoy showing it, so I have. People like they're talking, not even whispering. Right. Do you guys not hear that? Were those men that time? Just now that just... Yeah, it's, I think it's Isaac. Isaac what? He's got his... He's, where's he at? I'm not saying anything, dude. He says he hasn't said anything. I've been here fucking quiet listening to everything you, you're saying. Do you hear anything, Isaac? I hear fucking. I thought that was you guys just mumbling. We thought it was you. No, I just hear mumbling. I hear man. I I hear like bass men mumbling. That's what I heard. Right. I heard. I hear kids. I thought it was like down here I thought outside. Like, you feel right I now? I hear grown men over in that direction too. I heard somebody like talking. I thought it was somebody assault on this one. No, I wasn't saying that. I was being quiet because I was thinking, are you guys hearing something? And then when you guys said it was me for the third time, I go, no, it's not me because I was trying to be quiet. Okay. Do you hear voices downstairs? I hear voices, yeah. We're going to go downstairs. We'll just go downstairs. People are no, down. let's go to the end of the, the hall here. first. All right, let's go to the hallway. Should we go to the end of the hall first? Yeah, the thing is just... What do you want to run we downstairs know, and chase we know, we know that's going to be the shit. That's going to be something. All okay. right. Is that you? What was that? Guys. 
get your Stefan's device. I just heard someone go, woo! That's the portal. No, there's nothing in the office anymore. It doesn't exist. This is one state. Okay. No other activity in the portal. Light? Yeah. Oh, where'd you go? You're just here. Got scared away. Come on. Wow. Tell me about the children. The children? Um. So we were upstairs on the top floor. It's the first floor and we were getting ready to go downstairs. We were filming kind of a hallway scene and we heard what sounded like children playing. Um, and it was very clear what we heard. Light. Yeah. Light. Yeah. Um, what I heard was two, maybe three children playing, like kind of arguing, fighting over um, a doll or a toy or something like that. And it was obviously, you know, it was obvious that everybody wanted to turn at it. And I don't think it ever got like angry playing, just, you know, happy kind of argumentative playing. And um, since we've had it downstairs, I mean, obviously no, no sign of it. It's like, like, like they're playing hide and go seek with us or something. So we're here at the David Oman house. We were on the second floor. Um, the second floor is interesting. Right now we're on the third. It's a little less heavy than the second. And heavy, what do I mean by heavy? Heavy, I mean my ears ringing. I mean, like, uh, like have you ever had a cold? Where your head is just like squished, very hot, very stuffy. That's what I experienced. In, on the second floor. At the very beginning of our journey on the second floor, I was standing with my back facing the stairs, and I heard the children playing. Well, I mean, I've been to this part of the hills many times. I've trained people here, I've gone to do interviews here. He's literally been outdoors for 110 days. See this little flash right there? And it's fully charged. It's a full charge. It's hot. The battery's hot. What? Turn it off. Turn off your camera. We'll just get out this room. It just went. It. The camera's overheating. Uh, it's right by a window. It's about 74 degrees outside. In this room, I would have to say we're just maybe 78 at, at peak. Yeah. It's very, it's the cool, it's one of the cooler rooms of the house. No, because it's all the way on the ground level. And this is a good battery too. It's not even one of the cheap knockoff batteries. It's a cannon battery. I don't know what to tell you. Like, uh, this is a, it's an interesting situation. Right, we have we had something else. What did you have? Aneurysm? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. All right, so I was recording what was going on in here, and I noticed like a little like red logo I'd never seen on this camera before. Been shooting with it for a long time. A um, few minutes later, my camera said like too hot, shutting down. I've never had this thing shut down before. I've shot out in the middle of the desert before. I've shot, you know, at punk rock festivals in the middle of the day when it's, you know, upwards of 105 degrees. Never had a problem with this overheating. Uh, here we are in a bedroom that's maybe 72 degrees with a brand new fresh battery. Um, haven't been recording that long with it, and all of a sudden, too hot. Anything else? Were you, when you were seeing 
it, what, what was the first thoughts that went through your head? Um, but my first thought was literally like, okay, it's not that hot in here. Um, it's actually rather enjoyable. I'm shooting next to this open uh, doorway with a nice cool breeze rolling in. Um, just, I don't know, felt really good inside and I had no idea why it was happening. Um, I, technically, I was just thinking about like, okay, battery, uh, camera, like what is going on here? Feeling everything, nothing felt particularly hot. Um, my battery, on the other hand, normally lasts for about maybe three hours worth of shooting video. Um, this time, got maybe about an hour out of it. You know what's great about this? The fact that Suzanne's not here. Oh! There's definitely something moving around under here, like underneath my feet. Now it's my turn to be here. Oh shit.
Yo. Okay, that was fucking weird. Um, I'm here in the lower level. Um, there's a story of uh, a Native American chief burial ground or something like that down here. And this is one of the other spots that are supposed to be really made with paranormal. So we're going to sit here. Everybody sat here for about five minutes. Oh, the light. Dude. Dude. Yo. Okay, dude, that's fucking weird. The lights keep coming on and off on here. It's so fucking weird. I'm just sitting down here. There's nothing. There's no light. My hand. There's no light switch. The light just keeps coming on and off. Dude. Light keeps coming on and off. What the fuck? That's so fucking weird. If there's somebody in here, turn the light off. Oh my god. Dude! If there's someone here, turn the light off again. If there's someone in here, turn the light off right now. Oh, oh okay. Fuck this shit, dude. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit, dude. You know, I left the light. The light kept on turning on and off. What? Why didn't you just turn the light off? I didn't know what else we were doing. I asked it if anybody is in here to turn the light off, and it instantly turned off. These light switches are on in every room. And Isaac had an experience, and I think we figured it out. It's just uh, uh, Who is it's, it? it's it's uh, it's uh, circumstances that caused what he had. It. Do we want to go to the earth room and show it? Look at. If I wanted to, I can go like this, slowly with my hand. You can control it. False. Uh, we're trying to prove it, you know, just be honest about it. That's something. Contact. 
there's many people or there's, there's many spirits that surround the portal is there any spirit that would like to speak one at a time though. Come, on, come on you guys to make it work we need one at a time what is your name I heard. I heard name. What? I heard Steven. I heard Steve. I. I. You know what I mean? Steve. 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 Yeah. Steve. Steve. What's your last name? What's that? Everyone's shy. No one has last names. Mom. I'm Stefan. You just said your name. Tim? No, you said. <laughs> what? What is your last name? He's trying. He said, "I am." Sorry, you guys. You gotta do it. Well, while editing this footage, we end up hearing something that sounds like kids in the background. It, to me, it honestly, it just sounds like a like a, a child, like a. That they got caught doing something wrong. Listen for yourself. Could be nothing. Could be us just being overzealous. But let us know your opinion. He's trying. He said, I am. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> you gotta do it. He's trying. He said, I am. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> you gotta do it. Do you know anybody here? That is like crazy right now. Who would you like to speak to? This thing's going. Breathe. Breathe. Alright, your turn. Breathe. Ah, Mike. <laughs> Jerk. They can breathe. They're still yeah. sure. They're they're whispering. Whispering. So you I don't believe in isms so either. The, uh, combat fire spewler. Uh, allows the <laughs> to talk. Is there a message you'd like to share? Look to your left. Yeah, I'm still going red the entire time. That's all. Yeah. I'm trying to get his attention, but he's not paying attention, so they stop. Oh, that guy's boring. All batteries are dead, and that's drained. Is there a message that you would like to, to share with Earth? Or with humans? Earth? <laughs> are you from another planet? There might be no. Okay. He goes, no. What is it like in your dimension? dimension or your form? I think he's going red pretty strong. Someone's trying to talk to Tim. Are you trying to talk to Tim? Mm -hmm. I'm listening. Do I know you? Murder. Dude. He did say murder, right? Yeah. yeah. He said he was talking to you. Your little kid says you are too. So you are. You are. I think it's going pretty strongly red. That's, I've never seen it go that strong before. That's good. Were you murdered? Mm-hmm. 
too much is happening right now. Too Actually, much is happening at one time. Dude, someone's like shouting. <laughs> okay, so we've got the K2 like spiking right now. We've got yeah. lots of chatter on the box. We've got scratching from the ceiling. No, yeah, that was walking up. <laughs> Isaac, Isaac just got sabotaged. I felt like there was walking across this way. Like down the hallway. Is this the hallway right here? Yeah. Slightly behind. I hear it right now. Hold on. Listen. Can you guys tap on the wall or the ceiling? That way we know what direction you're coming from. If you're upstairs on the top floor, right above us, can you make a sound? I'm having a lot of fucking pressure in my lungs. Can you touch Tim? Who killed you? Who was the murderer? Enthusiastic as all hell, to be honest with you. The fact that, as I've said to you guys before, it was pretty, you know, normal and how should we say passive, but with you guys coming over, and I think especially Stefan, because it seems to be that every time he comes to visit, the spirits that he brings in the house just throw down a big party, and tonight was no exception. It was crazy this evening. Um, especially, like I said, being in the room, in the theater room, while you were in the gosh darn in the earth and wall room some 40 feet away and Stefan saying do something physical grab his feet and when you walked in you said that your feet were grabbed before Stefan had a chance to tell you what he was asking for which was mind-blowing that was very unique and I was really impressed with that as well as the little kids that you guys all heard because I've heard the little kid's voice and we've recorded the little kids down there, but it's been a long time. So to have you guys validate that without even mentioning it, that was pretty impressive. What does the house mean to you? It's a legacy to me, to my, from my family, to me, to the spirits. To me, it's a, it's a legacy and it's important and I, um, I treasure it. If you had to tell the spirits one thing, what would you want them to know? That they're safe here, that nobody's going to be bothering them here at this house, and they have a safe harbor to uh, hang out in and uh, relax in and enjoy themselves. Do you find yourself viewing, being the owner, and li living inside of the most haunted house in America? feel that is a curse or do you feel that is a blessing? I don't consider it a curse in any way, shape, or form. As I've always said and I'll say it again, you have more to fear from the living than you do the dead. Well, I think when I take away from this, I've been here quite a bit, but 
Yeah. One thing that David mentioned when we got there was the house seems to have lightened up a little bit, like the energy got a little bit higher. They're kind of excited that we're coming here doing this stuff. But in the short time that we've been here, it's been very active. I mean, just to the point where we're doing the isolation sessions, and I asked the spirits to go and touch Tim's feet. And for him to have that kind of experience at the same time as I was asking that, you know, that's not a coincidence. That was something. And it just goes to show that the spirits of this house like to have a lot of fun and play the games that we like to play. What am I taking on this? Dude, I mean, I've been here before. Um, I witnessed some unexplainable things the first time. With the voices, um, the kids singing. Um, I got to finally he taste the delicious ribs of our gracious host. Um, but I'm still fucking kind of shook up from what happened in the isolation where the lights were just coming on and off. That shit was weird. I mean, I made a direct order. I asked them if anybody's in here, turn these lights off one time two times and they did it almost right on cue and once I walked in and sat down the lights were already fucking going crazy I didn't even know we had to turn the lights off I didn't even know where the lights were at to be honest and I sat down and the lights were going off and you know I heard you guys talking about something about like tickling and I was like okay are right, these fuckers trying to tell them to do something weird with the with the spirits but they had other plans and they were just fucking with me and there was lights off and this is the first time I heard it. Like, I said it I mean I talked I said out loud Turn these lights off, and they they did it. And you, I mean, you'll see with the footage, and they, they did it. And it was fucking weird. And it's that's literally the weirdest thing I've ever. Other than the voices and the singing and the stuff like that, those two are the eeriest, eeriest experience by far. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I have to like still have goosebumps. If there's someone in here, turn the light off right now. Oh, oh okay. Fuck this shit, dude. Yeah, I mean, th this is my first time at the the house, and there was a lot to take in um, there was basically children that were laughing and playing um, it, it sounded like like if you're in a bedroom and then the next bedroom there's two kids and they have a toy that they're fighting over but like in a fun playful manner that's that's like what we heard uh, so that was interesting um, and then in like the isolation in the earth was it the earthen room um, a couple things happened. It was like somebody like started felt like somebody's pulling the rug out from underneath my feet as I was sitting there in the chair. Like something literally moved be beneath my feet. Uh, I can't explain. It. There's no rug there. It's just like a wooden floor. So, um, and then at one point something touched my shoulder and I looked over and I heard something whispering to me. I couldn't make out what it was saying, but there was definitely something talking to me. So I can't, can't quite explain that one. So that was uh, probably the brunt of my experiences here. Light. Well, since I got here, I felt this pressure. I, I am not sure if I said it in passing to you, Kelly, but I feel pressure in my head and my eyes since I've since I've been here. And it's only really believed itself maybe two, three times. Um, every time, I mean, this is David Oman's house. It's the most haunted house in America. I mean, and it approves itself to be active every single time we're here. And I mean, the whispering in the bathroom, there's no way to prove that. It's just my word versus, and, and, and then typically, you know, it's easy to, to embellish something it's not I did not embellish this I, I even if you think like I know I didn't come to here to like oh let's prove there is a ghost I was like let's prove there's no ghost and then we too many things happen that you can't say that they've all house most haunted house in America